views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. instructions in Spanish, Arabic, and French for all attendees who may wish to dial into the Spanish, Arabic, and French lines at this time. At this time, I will ask the Spanish interpreter to share the instructions. So we need the Spanish interpreter. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the following message is going to be in Spanish. Offering interpretation services. Buenas tardes a todos. Gracias por estar acá. Si desean servicios de interpretación en español, por favor, marque desde su teléfono al 347-414-414. E ingrese el número de conferencia 941-190-048. Le repito. Si desea servicios de interpretación en español, por favor, marque desde su teléfono al 347-966-4114. Ingrese el número de conferencia 941-190-048 numeral. Si desea escuchar la interpretación en español, pero desea permanecer en esta conferencia virtual para poder ver la reunión de su computadora. Silencio el micrófono de su computadora. Y se de su computadora. Y llame a la línea de conferencia de Nuevamente, la línea de conferencia de Excuse me, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Can you please mute yourself, my dear? Yes, I will. Thank you. I am so sorry. Nuevamente, uh, la línea de conferencia en español es 347-966-4114 y el número de conferencia es 941-190-048. Gracias. All right, at this time, may I have the Arabic interpreter, please? مساء الخير جميعا انا اسمي روساريو انا الشخص المختص النهارده عن الاجتماع في القاعة الرئيسية الاجتماع هيكون عن طريق الانترنت وقبل ما نبدأ أحب أنا أعلن أن في ترجمة للغة العربية الإنجليزية الفرنسية وجميع كل ترجمة أو كل لغة مختصة بالعمل على خط منفصل وإحنا هنعلن التعليمات أيضا باللغات الثلاثة الأسبانية والإنجليزية والعربية للحضور جميعا اللي هي يحتاجوا لأي من هذه الترجمات العربية الفرنسية الأسبانية على كل خط على حدة خط اتصال منفصل وهنقدر أن احنا نشارك معاكم المعلومات عن كيفية الوصول للمترجم بالنسبة للغة العربية هيحتاج الشخص اللي هيحتاج الترجمة هيحتاج يتصل برقم التليفون ألا وهو 347 تسعة ستة ستة أربعة واحد واحد أربعة الرقم مرة ثانية ثلاثة أربعة سبعة تسعة ستة ستة أربعة واحد واحد أربعة ورقم التعريف للحصول على الخط اللغة العربية هو أربعة صفر أربعة ثلاثة خمسة تسعة اثنين ثمانية خمسة وبعدها رمز الشباك رقم التعريف مرة أخرى أربعة صفر أربعة ثلاثة خمسة تسعة اثنين ثمانية خمسة والضغط على رمز الشباك شكرا جزيلا Thank you very much At this time may I have the French interpreter please 
Bonsoir, nous sommes deux, deux interprètes pour vous ce soir. Moi, c'est Maggie et il y a Tatiana qui est avec nous. Alors, pour la langue de français, on vous demande en, au départ de mettre votre téléphone sur mute pour qu'on ne puisse pas entendre. Il y a plusieurs personnes qui vont venir sur la ligne. Alors, vous, on vous demande de téléphoner le numéro 347-966-4114. Le numéro d'ID de conférence que vous allez signaler au numéro de, de, du ton, c'est de 224-770-679 et dièse. Alors, je répète, le numéro de téléphone, c'est le 347-966-4114. Et le numéro d'ID à signaler, c'est le 224-770-679 et dièse. Euh, si vous voulez et recevoir l'interprétation en français, c'est très important de vous mettre sur le but, de garder le, 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 la ligne quand même assez tranquille puisqu'il y a plusieurs personnes qui vont nous rejoindre sur le téléphone pour vous écouter. Alors, euh, je répète encore et nous sommes là pour vous. Alors, le numéro encore, c'est 347-966-4114. Le numéro de conférence, 224-770-679. Yes. Merci. So much. And I just want to give a shout out to the interpreters who were on the line early, troubleshooting. So happy to have you here. You're so important to us. Thank you for all your work. We're so Merci grateful to have you on the Merci d'avoir les interprètes qui sont là, qui, qui nous reçoivent et puis qui sont là pour travailler pour nous. Ils sont là très tôt. Et puis, merci beaucoup d'être présents. All right, so we're going to get started today. So first of first and foremost, um, my name is Superintendent Rodriguez Rosario. I'm the proud superintendent of District 9. And I'm so happy to have so many people. We have over 187 people, and I'm so happy that we have so many people on the line. And the goal today really is, one, to give some information but most importantly is to try to answer your questions as quickly as I possibly can and as accurately as I possibly can. I do want to remind us that the information that we're getting changes um, hourly at times, um, not just daily. Oftentimes, as the data comes in um, around COVID, we get new information hourly. So I'm going to start by giving you some an overview, and then we were going to really open it up to see um, and answer questions. I'm going to ask the people on my team to help me monitor um, the chat room um, so that I'll stop at periodic places so that we can answer questions. All right, so... Um, Mrs. Rosario, I'm sorry, can I just also just a brief, brief public service announcement, please write your name and your school affiliation in the chat so that we can capture your information. So say that again, I want to make sure everyone heard it. So a quick public service announcement, please make sure that you put your name and the school that you represent or any affiliation in the chat so that we can absolutely make sure that we capture all of your questions, your information, and have you join us for our next meeting. Thank you. And I do see that we have some principals on the line, some assistant principals, some school staff, some PCs, some um, parent coordinators. So to the um, school level personnel, thank you so much for being here this evening. I also know that we have some personnel from the borough central office, which is our partners um, from the borough who support us in District 9. So I want to thank them as well. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get this ball rolling. So good evening, everybody. Um, I'm so excited about being here today and being able to um, give you some information, but more importantly, try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. So to begin with, um, we are considering um, right now on the table, and it can change uh, within an hour, and it can change within a day, but we are thinking of reopening schools on September 10th. Again, we are planning or trying to reopen schools on September 10th. Schools will not look the same as they did before. 
we will be going into what we call blended learning. Blended learning is when schools will, um, when students will be in in-person school for two to three days, and then they will be learning remotely for the other two or three days. So again, blended learning will be where students will be in school in person for two to three days. And then uh, I know because I saw it also. Who you know. will continue um, remotely for the other two to three days. That's what we call blended learning. Um, um, school leaders at this time no, are to... reviewing different models that were provided by the central office team and should be discussing with their SLTs, their parent associations. Um, in fact, they should be holding their own town halls to um, gather information from you to see which of these models best fits the school. The models have to do with space. Do we have the space for the number of students that will be in the building? They also have to do with the number of teachers available to teach. And the space has to do with making sure that we are able to have six feet of distance between students and faculty to ensure safety as per the CDC. So um, every school has had is holding meetings. If you have questions about when the meetings are or you have questions of any nature, I'm going to make sure that Barbara Ortiz and Yadira Elutis put their information in the chat. And if you have any questions about your school, please contact these two ladies. They will make sure that we connect you with the school and that we give you any information that you may need. Again, schools must be holding um, small meetings, large meetings, um, and really talking with parents about what is the best they can, what, which of the models is the best that they can choose um, for the community. Again, it's not that parents choose the model, is that parents help support the decision around which model fits the community best. Okay, so it's not that the parents pick the model, but that they inform the choice of the model because there are other things that principals have to take into consideration, such as space and such as the number of personnel teachers that will be available. Also, parents will have a choice to send their children to blended learning or to keep their children in 100% remote learning. That survey is due August 7th. And I'm going to ask my fabulous uh, District 9 team to make sure that the link to the survey is in the chat. The survey is asking about whether you want your child to be in blended learning, which is two to three days in person and two or three days in remote, or do you want your child in 100% remote? That survey is due by August 7th because the, uh, the principals need to know how many students they are going to have to um, plan for and how many students they're going to plan for in blended learning and how many students they're going to plan for in remote learning. That is due August 7th. I'm gonna stop here and see if there are any questions about the survey. And again, I'm gonna ask my team um, for chat room or if, they, if, if anybody needs to speak, they can raise their hand. Yes, yeah, so there aren't any questions at, okay, okay, there is one question. Okay. Uh, I wanted the parents to choose, this is from iPhone. Um, I'm not sure who the person is. They can either unmute themselves or I'll be happy to go ahead and read the question. It says, I wanted the parents that choose remote for the kids. The kids can stay home or does it depend on the tally of remotely or blended? So I'm not no, exactly no. sure. 
Yeah, I, I think I have it. So okay. <laughs> if you choose for your child to stay only in remote, that means every day at home and you're studying through the computer, the students do not have to come to school. They stay home and the instruction will be like it was for the last two to three months via computer. Okay? So remote learning is not in school. You're not at the physical building. You are home and the teacher will appear on the computer and support your child remotely. So there will be no in-person. If you go up for blended learning, blended learning means that your children will be in school two or three days and then the other two or three days they will also do remote learning. So those are the difference and that's what you can choose from. More questions, please on the survey. A second Excuse question. me, I have a question. Somebody. Uh, hi, Alanis. Give me a moment, sweetie. Let me um just ask. Actually, no. Go ahead. Ask Mrs. Rosario what you need, and then we'll Alanis, go. Alanis, please answer. Ask me the question. Okay, so my mother, I think she's gonna be choosing a remote learning because of the situation that's happening. But in order, because I have a computer at my at my school for my school, but it doesn't really work. <laughs> So, so uh, yeah. at least if you are having trouble with technology, we will connect you with your school and we will connect you with the, uh, the parent coordinators who can support you in making sure the computer is working properly. Okay? So if you're having technical problems with your computer, whether it's that the computer is not working or there's technology issues and your parent is picking remote, we are going to make sure that, um, and I know that my people are taking notes right now, we're going to make sure that you have, uh, that, that the tech team supports you in making sure that your computer is up and ready to go for remote learning. Okay, Arlenis? The other question is, is this for the fall? Yes, so you are now, what you are choosing for the survey right now is that you are choosing for, Hopefully September, unless it changes, and it could change, whether your child stays in remote 100% of the time, okay? If the child stays in remote 100% of the time for September. Test this. Okay. I have a question. Somebody um, else has a question? Yes. Yes. We also have a couple of questions in the chat. Okay, Rosa, I think somebody had a question first. Rosa? Um, I wanted to know, is it going to be a for sure thing that they're going to start in September or is yes, it getting to the back? So let me be very clear. You should be getting home a letter. We All of that will be determined by science, right? It depends on the percent of COVID cases in New York, in New York City. If they stay below 3%, there's a likelihood that we will open in September. If the numbers start to tick up, Right. If the number of cases in the in New York City start to rise, that that in, that we may stay in remote instead of going to the blended learning. So you okay. have to stay tuned to the news. Um, the mayor and the governor are consistently giving and the, and the chancellor are consistently giving us updates. Right now, our percent in New York City is one to two percent, which is great. If it stays like that, the likelihood is that we may open for blended learning. If the numbers start to go up, then that may change. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We have a Hi. question in the chat. It says, yes. hello. My son will be new, will be a new student for 3K. Will I have to also complete the survey? If you wish your child to be in remote, you need to complete the survey. If you wish your child to be in blended learning, then no, your child will be coming into school two or three days a week and will be in blended learning two or three days, I mean, in remote learning two or three days. Um, put your information in the chat and I will make sure that either Barbara or Yadira reach out to you or Roxanne. Um, Roxanne, you're on the call, right, Roxanne? Letta? Yeah, everybody's on the call, Mrs. Rosario. They're manning the translation rooms. Okay, so Roxanne Letta is the person that's in charge of early childhood. Put your information in the chat, and we will make sure that someone reaches out to you to answer any questions. Hi. I have a question also. Sure. 
Um, my child, he's actually going to pre-K right now. Uh -huh. So he also receives services. Is the okay. remote also going to apply to the services like speech and OT? Roxanne, can you answer that? Or Bill, if you're on the line, if not, I will chime in. This is Roxanne Letta. Thank you. Roxanne Letta is the one that's in charge of the district early childhood. Mm -hmm. um, she's on my team and she's going to answer your question. Okay, I'm then. sorry if you hear background noise. It's because I have the Arabic chat room open um, on the same computer. So okay. the answer to the question would be yes. Remote services will be offered if your child is fully remote. That goes for any child, no matter whether they're in early childhood or all the way through high school. So okay. similar to what we had going on during summer school, mm -hmm. we have special needs students. Mm -hmm. Early childhood students currently in summer school or summer mm -hmm. learning, extended learning programs, not summer yeah. school, I'm sorry, extended mm -hmm. learning programs, and they are receiving remote services. Okay, but if I choose for him to be partial, the services will happen on the days that he actually is in school. Yeah. That will be, yeah. That will okay. be determined by the school, and the school will make sure that you're part of that conversation. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I have a question. Uh, we have another. Um, if you could raise your hand so we can try to <laughs> have some organi organization because we have like four heard. in the chat. And then I'm going to let 384 241 go ahead and ask Mrs. Rosario the question. Then I'm going to move to the chat. And if you could just raise your hand on the bottom, there's a raise your hand option. I see you, Ms. Kendrick. You will be after 384. After Miss um, 384 241, do you want to ask the is question? That the student? I'm not sure if it's a student. All I see is it sounded from the like a student. Who started speaking? Please ask the question. Me, I have a question. Sure. My name is Abdul Kamar. My question is um, Yes? Hello? Yes, I have a fifth grader. I mean, a sixth grader. Wanna, doing, um, wait, wait, there's a student, and then I'll come back to you. There's a student first. Student, okay. please ask your question. Um, I want to say, I want to be in like two days in school and three days at home. Well, that will depend on what model your school chose. Most models have you in school two to three days a week and then home for remote. So that depends on your school and your school should be giving you that information shortly. Okay, that's called blended learning. Okay, now oh, with the you. parent, okay? Yeah, now, thank you. Patrick, you can, you can speak now. Yes, you had a fifth grader? You have to unmute yourself, sweetie. We, you're still muted. I can't hear you. Okay. Yes, I have, a, um, I have a son that's going to fifth grade. He's going to ISU 2 Um. If I want him to, I have a sixth grader, a, um, a fifth grader, and a first grader. If I want them to do a full-time remote learning, who do I speak to for all them grades first? You have to fill out the survey for each of your children, right? Because in any household, you have a child who's in first grade, a child who's in middle school, a child who's mm -hmm. in upper elementary. Fill out the survey for each of the grade levels, and mm -hmm. that will let us know what you want for each of your children. If you need Where any you support, the link, at? Um, the link will be in the chat that you it's in the chat. It's in the chat now. Ms. And Ken. if you have any questions, you can reach out to Yadida or to Barbara and they will help you um, connect to the parent coordinator or they will help you through the survey personally. Ms. Rosario, okay? you can also okay. call me directly. She's my and you can also yes. call the principal. His name is Pepe Gutierrez who just jumped on. You can call him directly and he will help you also. But you are still debating whether the schools will be open or not. Y'all won't know nothing until like September, right? We we won't, you know, and I, I'm going to say it again. On, it all depends on the science, right? Our chancellor keeps saying it depends on the science. We want to make sure that everybody's safe. If it stays between 1% and 2%, the likelihood is that we will open. If it goes above that, if it goes above 3%, we will probably be all in remote learning, right? Okay. Be school, but we will all be in remote. So... Everything depends on how our numbers in the city do, right? Because we're going strictly by the science. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Next question, please. So we have, um, I'm going to take the Mr. Mister or Miss, I'm, I apologize, Mahi Aming. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. You had your hand up? There you go. Um, hi. Uh, we don't hear you, sweetie. Um, when you do the learning, um, how is it? Yeah. Um, oh, can, can you hear me now? Sweetie, we have a bad connection. For some, reason, for some reason, there's a very bad connection and I cannot hear the question. If they can write it in the chat, I will be happy to answer it. Okay. So, Mr. Rosario, there is a question in the chat. This is and this is a great question. It's come up before. If you initially choose your okay. learning, then later you feel it isn't working for him or her, will there be a problem to switch to blended learning? Okay. So, there will be times in the year where if you've been in remote learning, you can change to blended learning. Let me say that again. There will be specific times in the school year where if you want to switch from remote learning to blended learning, you will be able to do so for your children. So let's say you start in remote learning, you stay in remote learning for a period of time, you don't feel like it's working, you wanna to change to blended, there will be specific times. You won't be able to do it at any time. There will be okay. two to three times in the school year where parents will have a window where you will be able to change. So you will be able to change from remote to you'll be able to change from remote learning to blended learning or from blended learning to remote learning at specific times in the school year that information will be hopefully going out shortly but as a parent you will be able to switch at specific times you will not be able to say on monday i want to switch to remote learning or i want to switch to blended learning on tuesday there will be targeted times in the year where you will be able to switch. Next that was question. My question. I'm comment. sorry. That was Next. my question. And I wanted to ask in, in addition to that. So the teacher who's going to do the remote learning, is that going to be the same teacher that would be blended learning as well? Like, or is it different? It may be different or it may be the same. It depends on the school and the situation, right? So I'm going to be very honest. It depends on the model they chose and the amount of teachers that are available the amount of teachers that are doing remote and the amount of teachers that are doing in person. Because right now, there is a survey that went out to the staff because there are some staff members that may have pre-existing conditions that do not allow them to be back in school. So they have what we're calling an accommodation. So we're waiting for that information to come in as well. And that has to do with um, whether it's the same teacher or a different teacher. It will, it will vary from school to school and situation to situation, the best way is to keep in touch with your child's school for that information. You're Hello. Welcome. Next. Hello. Yes. Hi, my name is Lynn Cola Brown and I'm a parent of two children attending Capper. And I wanted to know, are temperatures gonna be taken throughout the day? So the way, um, and, and thank you for asking that question. Um, we are going to be number one. You are our first level of defense. I'm going to say that again. Parents are our first level of defense. We need you as parents to monitor your children's health very closely. If you even think your child is sick, please, please do not send them to school, right? If you even think they have a fever, you think they have a cold, please do not send them to school. There will be opportunities, and we don't know the, the specific yet of exactly how it's going to happen, for temperature checks when the child comes into the building. Throughout the day, unless the child is showing symptoms, right? They're showing symptoms, then the child will be taken to an isolation room. They will be monitored, you will be contacted, and we will be asking you to follow through with your child's um, health uh, carrier. So okay. let me say that again, because it was a lot. So you are, parents are our first level of defense. Please do not send your child to school if you even think the child is sick. The same thing is gonna happen with staff. If the staff even thinks they're sick, we're asking them not to come in. 
That's number one. Number two, we are, we're, we're going through the process of figuring out what temperature checks will look like in the school. Probably there'll be a temperature check as your child walks in. And then the only time the temperatures will be taken again is if the child is showing any kinds of symptoms. The child will be monitored, will be sent to an isolation room where there will be an adult there that will monitor. You will be contacted and asked to pick up the child and follow through with your caregiver. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Um, we, have we, have about, we have like about 10 more questions. Let's go okay. quickly. Let's, I'll okay. try to do it as fast as I can. Question. Mm -hmm. My question, question is, what accommodations are available for our students with disabilities? Does, any, does everyone have a computer and internet access? So most yes. we have, last we checked, we were up to 87% of children with connectivity and with computers. If there are questions around that, contact your school directly. They will help you with one of two things, either helping you get a, a, a device and connectivity, or they will help you repair the computer if necessary. Contact your school, they will help you with that. Um, that's on that end. And then what was the other part of that question? I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. What accommodations are available to, what accommodations are available for our students with disabilities? Um, accommodations in what sense? Is it the number of, remember that in most classrooms, we will have no more than nine to 12 students per class so that we can have the social distancing. If your child is in a self-contained class, they will be following the same protocols as any other class. They will be getting their services through either remote learning or through blended learning. Um, and um, the, the ICT classes will be again, smaller classes about nine to 12 is the average. And again, they will be receiving their services through remote or through blended learning. Hi, I have a question. So, um, yes. This is uh, Julie Carlton. I work at CMSP 327 in the high school. And I was wondering if there was any um, schedule quite yet for how the actual day would go, like how many class periods there would be in a day, how long each period would be and then how that would also look like in the remote class as well. So that is, ex that, um, thank you for the question, Julie. Um, we are awaiting um, sample schedules and that will be hopefully coming out by the beginning of next week. Okay, great, thank so you. So sample much. schedules should be coming out to schools by the end of, by hopefully next week. Hi. I have a Hello. question also. I wanted to know what was what do you have right. in place? Can for I ask children? everyone? I'm sorry. Can I ask everybody to please raise their hand because we have like about another ten questions in the chat. I and did raise my hand, but it was it was it's not working. So that's why I wanted to make sure oh, you said there okay. was ten questions. Go ahead. Absolutely. So go ask your question. Yes. I'll try to go so, as quickly as possible. So I just wanted to know, what do you have in place for, my child is going into the fifth grade and those are very um, antsy, class clowny kids who um, will end up trading their masks. Do you give them masks every day? What's gonna happen? How is the teacher gonna monitor that the kids are keeping the mask on their face? Is I need to know if, if there's any way that if my, my child, if I'm at work and my child all of a sudden has symptoms, what is in place? What, what, how many isolation rooms do you have? Do you have one whole isolation room for everybody? Or is it just like individually? And now if you put those children in that isolation room, now you're compromising the staff member. Does that staff member be put out for two weeks afterwards? Or is that staff member going to stay there every single time? So now that's a lot. So, let me, so slow down so I can answer some of them at the same time because you shot me a lot of questions. So <laughs> your fifth, so... As with anything, we have to create a safe environment for kids to be able to understand, not scare them, but at the same time, let them understand why we are doing masks. So your child should be coming in with a mask. If your child does not come in with a mask, a mask will be provided. So that's number one, right? So if your child does not come in with a mask, a mask will be provided. Um, children will be, um, the, the teacher will be creating Routines, the same way that we have routines to go to the bathroom, the same way we have routines to do X, Y, and Z, to make sure that children understand the importance of keeping on a mask, right? So we will be, in the beginning of the school year, 
The teacher will be making sure that they show exactly. videos, that we have, you know, rules in place and things of that nature so that children understand the importance. Remember, the children will be six, part, six feet apart. If a child takes off a mask, the child will be instructed to put on the mask. The only time that a child does not wear a mask, especially in fifth grade and above, is if they have a health issue like asthma and they will have a medical note as to why they can't have a mask. Mm. If a child shows up with any kinds of symptoms, the teach, mm. there will be a protocol in place for the child to be placed in a room, an isolation room, with a, a staff member who will stay six feet apart for their own safety and will be wearing a mask for their own safety and your child's safety. You will be contacted and then you will be asked to bring in the child and take them to your medical uh, caretaker. Um, if there is like a major case and there's, um, the child is truly, truly very, very, very sick, which we don't think will happen because the child is not going to show crazy symptoms from the morning till the afternoon. Of course, 911 will be called, but for the most part, the child will be taken into a room and they will be um, uh, they will be uh, looked over with a, and that usually will have a nurse at the at the school that will be able to monitor your child until you arrive and we can then take it to the next level. So that is on that level. Um, what was the other part of the question? If I missed anything? Um, yeah. So I know that parents normally drop off kids to school when they are already sick. When you give the child Tylenol, at the end of the day, the fever goes away and then every other symptom is still there. Uh, no, I know I, I, I that my son caught the flu this year. So. Out of a preponderance of caution, if a child is presenting any kinds of symptoms, the child will be put into an isolation room and the parent will be called. We are not going to play with whether it's a cold or whether it's COVID. We cannot take that chance. How many isolation rooms is there? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my worry. I don't think there's enough isolation rooms in my child's school. So that the, they usually, the, the state is requiring and the CDC is requiring one room. There will be space in that room to, to socially distance the children in that room. Okay? That's the best I can Hi, answer. good afternoon. Uh, I would like to know, uh, in, in regards to the question that somebody asked about the special needs children, mm -hmm. is this meeting uh, for District 75 or just for District 9? Because as, is, as you should know, I'm sorry to interrupt you, as you should know, District 75 has already had a whole lot of, you know, different type of... Uh, you know, isolation and other things due to children with real special needs um, that require real medical attention and whatnot. So just to not get everyone confused, I believe the last parent that asked about special needs, uh, I'm, I'm assuming they have a child in District 75. Is this meeting for District 75? No. And will it be one for District 75? This meeting is specifically for District 9 Okay. I do have some people that can answer some of the questions around D75, but this is for District 9. But if there are questions, please place them in the chat along with your contact information, because if we're not able to answer this for you, I can send that question to someone who will have the answer okay. for you and we'll get in touch with you. Okay. Thank you so much. And one last question. Go on because I came into the late into the meeting for district nine. I also have a child in district nine will in September, when September comes, what options do we have as parents to either send our child or, uh, you know, decide if we want to remote learn. I'm going to say very quickly, there's two choices. Either the child goes to blended learning, which is two to three days in school and two or three days remote learning or a hundred percent remote. There is a survey that has been placed in the chat for you to make that determination if you want your child in remote learning, it must be filled out by August 7th so that the schools can do the programming accordingly. Then there okay. will be times throughout the year where you'll be able to switch if you so choose, but there will be targeted times within the year for you to do that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, let's do some of the question. back questions. I want to ask a question, Miss, please. I want to ask this question. It's important to me. Okay. Okay. I've yeah. been raising my hand. Nobody. If, if, any, if you choose the remote, if you choose the remote, um, the the school to call your, your children to come to school, and they are on busing, 
is they going to the bossing is going to work with other schools or the same school going to take by bossing how that going to work so right now i'm going to be really honest with you the just department of education is figuring out bussing as we speak so we don't have all the answers around bussing at this time it could be that we get more information but at this time the department of education is working out the situation with bussing there are no concrete answers at this time ma'am oh, okay. my hand my name is alexis but I, I, i'm using my daughter's ipad i have uh -huh. two daughters that are in uh district uh one is district 75 and the other child is district nine since this is district nine Right. I've been having problems with the iLearn platform. Are you guys going to be using that iLearn platform again? So I'm going to be, thank you for it's that horrendous. question. No, I thank you. Thank you for that thank question. You. So, because that's, that wasn't, that, you know, that we have a lot of problems with iLearn. I get it. Believe me. And I'm going to be really honest with everyone here. We, so far, our understanding is that we may have a choice between iLearn and the Google. That is right now. That could change in an hour. That can change tomorrow. I don't know. I'm speaking right now. So please understand that anything that I'm saying can change an hour from now, right? The DOE. But right now we may have a choice. We in District 9 are leaning to Google at the moment because of the issues with iLearn. However, I don't, I'm hoping that that stays the way it is and we'll have that choice. I do not know if down the road they will change it. But for right now, that's where we're leading, and that's the best answer I can give you right now. The most honest. Okay? Thank you for the Hi. question. Hi. Hi. Okay, yes. so let's take the questions one at a time. Um, I see that Ms. Oh. Lauren Perez has her hand up. Okay. You can use me and Hi, how an are you? Question, so, my dear. Hi. So my name is Lauren Perez. I actually have I'm a camera. I'm trying to get in. Check the meeting, please. I can't hear, so please mute your phone so I can hear the question, please. Uh, can you hear me? It's Ms. Perez. Yes. Hi, so I'm starting. Um, Ms. Perez, give me a moment. Give me a moment to mute everyone and then oh. unmute you, okay? Give me a moment because um, we can't hardly hear you, my dear. Give me one moment. Okay, Ms. Hi, how are you? Okay. So I'm a parent. I have a kindergarten. I'm actually a parent from Mount Eden Children Academy. And I actually work for the health system. And I saw there was a lot of disparity, not just amongst the patient in regards to district. And being in District 9, reality is that we are in a dire district compared to other districts in New York State. I just want to know what is the... Um, what plans do you guys have, but not just the students that have enough PPE, for, for also the, the teachers, the parents, and the staff, because I understand the priority is to have the children in a safe place, but without the teachers being protected and the staff, we won't have no one to also, you know, be able to be with these, the students. Absolutely. That's one of my questions. You know, so what security we have that we're gonna have enough protection for this district. Okay. so. Um, all, all staff will be required to put PPE unless there's a medical docu a, a medical accommodation, just the same as with students, right? So masks, washing hands, sanitizers are being put in the buildings. Um, the, the buildings will be cleaned um, thoroughly with electromatic um, sprays and, and mm -hmm. cleaning. all of those things will be in place for everybody, including anybody who wants to come into the building for any reason. Okay. Right? for any reason. So everybody has to adhere to those things. The same thing as if a, if a, if a teacher is showing symptoms, they too will be isolated and they too will be sent home just like students. And then we will follow up with the Department of Health, which will inform us if there's a, a case that has been identified or not, et cetera. Also, the Department of Education is requesting that every staff member be tested for COVID um, at least uh, between seven and 14 days before we start. Now we cannot mandate that, but we are highly recommending that. And most people are going to um, be tested um, within seven to 14 days before the school year starts so that we can start on the right. Uh, I, 
want to make it clear because within this district, um, you can tell there's like multi generational family living within the same apartment. And I live right here close by the school. And even when I go to the supermarket, I have to tell people like you need to stay in six feet from me because you don't even have a mask on. So what you know, you can't control other households. But when your kids are all in the school together, are the parents going to be notified? Hey, in this pod, there was a child that probably hit on that home might have COVID. So the other so, parents will be more notified or yes. what, what relationship you guys have with the Department of Education, I mean, the health department in the Bronx or in this district, or I believe Montefiore is in that school to be able to notify the parents. Cause I, I, I see that the parents are actually in this web Zoom calls are, you know, prioritizing their children's health, but not, there's thousands of parents in this district that are not part of this Zoom call who probably so just want me, to send their kids. Yeah, so this is only one way we've been doing things where all, the, the chancellor has been sending memos home, the schools are sending blasts home. Um, there was a letter that's actually going out to families just today, answering some of the same questions you're asking. So there's actually something being sent out by the chancellor just today. So if there is a, a case of a case, you will be informed. Anybody in that cohort of students will be informed by the school and will be informed by the Department of Age. So we are working hand in hand with the Department of Health. We are, that's why, in fact, when we're being tested, the turnaround for testing will be 24 hours because we have a relationship with the Department of Health. So to Ms. answer your question, yes, you will be informed. Um, anyone that it has the child has come in contact with will be informed of that of, of a case, and there will be uh, letters going home. And there's one actually that was just being sent out today um, from the um, from the chancellor on that same question. And if you don't get it, please let us know. I will make sure you have it. So, Ms. Rosario, I see we have a guest, Richard A. Carranza. With his oh my up. goodness! <laughs> so welcome to our prestigious chancellor to our district nine town hall. Would you like? Thank to you, thank you so much, uh, Chancellor Carranza. Would you care to say a few words? You <laughs> may not we get on. I see his he's on and his hand is up, so I'm not sure. <laughs> um, he's a uh, chancellor. Oh, there he is. Thank you so much for joining our call. Is, um, you're very welcome. My internet is very bad at the moment. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Maybe. So you're the you're the representative for the, the for the chancellor. I have a question. Wait! 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 Yeah. wait, wait. Yes. You're muted at the moment. Um, I'm very sorry. My internet is very bad because I'm a road, but I am the um, representative of the chancellor. Thank you so much for being on the call. We appreciate it. And if at any time you wish to sh uh, chime in, please let us know by raising your hand and we will make sure that you are um, on. And if you can't speak, just put it in the chat. We will monitor the chat. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for being on the call. Yes. Now let's continue with questions, please. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Oh, Jesus. So um, my son at my son's school, he was going to kindergarten and his classroom had also the first graders in the same classroom. Uh, being the situation that we're going through right now, are those two classrooms going to be separate? Because there's no way that each kid is going to be six feet apart from each other. Okay. So every, because some school, some students are going remote and because of the different models, there will be no more than about nine to 12 kids in any given space for the six feet. If you were in a bridge class situation, which is what it sounds like, a bridge class, we have to, by CDC and by our chancellor, we must be at six feet. So any, every student will be six feet apart, no matter what grade. If you were in a bridge class situation, um, that, that um, was your child a special needs child in a bridge class? Is that what you're saying? Hello? I'm, I'm sorry, I was muted. Um, 
No, he's not a special needs. He's just a re two regular class classrooms together. Uh, supposedly, there was not enough space at school. So I, I'm wondering now, how are they going to make up space? Because um, according to what you're saying, you guys are assuming that people are going to choose remote learning. But what if that doesn't happen? Then that's why they have to pick the models. So the models are dependent on whether the school can keep the social distance with two groups going at the same time or three groups going at the same time, depending on the number of students at the school. So the models, that's why I was saying that the schools will de determine the model based on the number of students they have and the space they have to make sure that we maintain the distance. So the principals receive reports as to exactly how many students are, can be in a class at a given time, plus the number of students. And now they're gonna find out how many teachers. And based on that, they choose the model. Some models have two cohorts of, of students coming in. Some have three, depending on the number of students that are coming in at any given time. So that's why the models are different and the, and the number of students are different. Okay? It is 550 and we still have about 10 more questions. I do have a one telephone number that continues to raise their hand. I'm going to let them Please go ahead. And, speak. and then we're going to we're going to move into some of the questions in the chat. Move okay, go ahead. Full of everybody's time. So 996-892-06796. Do you have a question? Hello? Next question then. Going going towards the next question. If everybody can please mute themselves. Um so going to the what will happen with regards to discipline when students get into incidents such as fights, et cetera? Who will be mandated to take care of those situations? And will the students be then required to work remotely from home so as not to put anyone else in harm's way? So because you got to remember that we will not be having um, classrooms of 20 to 30 kids, right? We're going to be having classrooms of 9 to 12 students. So. The opportunities of fights to break out is lessened purely by the distance and purely by the a number of students in the classroom at a given time. If something were to break out, the, student, uh, the schools have what we call um, a response team. This response team is the emergency response that would respond to a fire. They will respond to other things. They've been specially trained and will continue to be specially trained to support this type of situation. And they will be, again, children will be um, attended to very quickly. And then we will be following the protocols that our chancellor puts in place as far as discipline. We will be following our discipline codes. Remember, we don't want to be really punitive to students because they are children. But at the same time, we must maintain safety. So that will go on a one-to-one -one basis depending on what the issue is. And we can get that. We can get that. We can get that, um, we can discuss that at a later town hall because I will continue to have town halls as we go into the school year. Next question. So, Ms. Rosario, there is a question that says, um, some parents want to get high and drunk while their children are in school. Let's keep it real. We will see some of these parents taking their children to school. I don't know if that was a question. Next question. How we will be? How will we be informed when you what you just mentioned about teachers not being mandated to, to get tested? What do you mean not being mandated? So I'm not sure if you mentioned that teachers don't have to get tested. No. But I think so teachers, teachers will be. It will be highly recommended that teachers be tested. Um, I we because of HIPAA laws, we cannot give out that information. Most but it will be highly recommended, so and from my understanding, most people would adhere to that. Right. Um, the next question is, will students receive their Metro cards? Um, as far as I am aware, um, if students are in need of Metro cards, they should be reaching their Metro cards. Are the students going to be required to get tested before coming to school? No, there will be no, at, at this point in time, right now, um, there is no mandated testing for students at this time unless a child shows symptoms and is then taken by the parent. Um, as I'm scrolling, I see from Erica G. When will they get their OSIS numbers? Schools haven't called parents. 
Is that for the younger grades? I'm not sure. Erica G, are you on the line? Would you like to? Um... Hi, yes. Um, this is for the new upcoming um, pre-K and kindergarten students. Uh, Roxanne, can you answer that? Or um, Roxanne, Letta, can you answer that question? I want to make sure I answer it correctly. Can we please repeat the question? I'm sorry. The question is, when will children, in new incoming students, get their OSIS number so that they can, you know, do what they need to do? OSIS numbers are generated once they first attend, that very first day of school. That is when the OSIS number becomes live and will be able to be used to, let's say, request technology. If, it's if the question is being asked in order to fill out the learning survey, you can just go ahead and bypass that question and press, I do not have an OSIS number. And you'll be able to fill out the remote learning survey. Next question. Does the DOE Thank have you. all the CDC requirements? In fact, I'm happy to say that we are far exceeding many of the CDC requirements. So our chancellor has made it very clear that our first priority is the safety of our students and our personnel. So we are exceeding the um, CDC um, recommendations um, for, you know, for everything that we're doing and being very, very cautious. And again, we are being driven by the science. Um, we're there, they, uh, they, the chancellor, the mayor, the governor are really, really monitoring um, numbers and in, 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 in the city as well and in particular districts to make sure that everyone stays safe. So here's a great question. I was just tested last week because I visited my doctor and he did some blood tests. I got the results on Friday. It is negative. As an educator, will I need to be tested again? So I'm going to be honest with you. We're going to ask that um, that staff be tested seven to 14 days. I believe it's 14 days. I'm, I believe that's the, the, the number before because we all know that, you know, we, we go about stuff. So the answer to that question is, Yes, we will ask that you do. We're happy that you were tested, but we will ask, and they will be then, we are asking that the staff um, opt into random testing. So I, for example, I will be testing before I go into work, and then I will be opting in as a, as a, as a superintendent or as a, as a DOE personnel to be um, part of random testing um, to make sure that we continue to keep our community safe. And again, monitoring myself and others for symptoms. And then the next question is, my school has only one nurse. Will there be more medical personnel on site in September daily? Um, I think at, at this point, um, there will be at least one nurse. If there will be more, that will de uh, be dependent on the availability of nurses and I guess also budget. But there will be, we're trying to get at least one medical person at each site. What is, I think you answered this, but let me ask it again. What is the plan to give students mandated service such as counseling and speech? I believe you answered that. Right? So yes, um, uh, Roxanne answered that question, but students will be receiving services either remotely or with blended learning. And those, those um, specific questions can be answered um, at the school level to get more details. Uh, what will happen to schools that do not have windows that, that open and that also have poor ventilation? So ventilation systems have been checked by the Department of Education and by the school, um, um, by the facilities. Um, every school is being checked and um, they're, they're checking for windows. They're making sure the windows open. They're checking ventilation systems. They're putting in um, uh, special um, filters. Right, special filters um, for any given situation at schools. Um, out there, there, there'll be um, some filters put in when appropriate for any school around ventilation systems. What will happen to the SHSAT and Regents? That we're still waiting on the state and the city to determine those regulations. Um, so we're still waiting on that. There's a gentleman with his hands up. Um, can um, can he speak? Um, Yes, yes, Mr. Um, Nesunu, you yes. can unmute oh. yourself, dear. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Sure. Um, what will be the frequency of testing of the staff and the teachers 
So and I'm going to I guess it, it will be good if they are mandated instead of being recommended. Okay, I, I agree. I agree, but we also have to make sure that we follow individual um, rights because we're in the country where we have to be careful not to infringe on anyone's rights. Um, so again, we will be highly, at the moment, they will be highly recommended to be tested right before we go to school and then to opt into random testing throughout the year. That is the way the policy stands as of right now. Now we have okay. Mr. Hernandez who okay. has had also, for, Wait, wait, let him finish sorry. one quickly sorry. and then I'm going to the next question. And also, and also, and also, I will suggest to, to you as from the DOE in, in such meetings to recommend to the parents of each community that you go to do such um, uh, meetings to recommend to, to the parent to try to train or emphasize to the kids once we at once the kids are at home and they are yet to go back to school to emphasize to them the need to wear a mask. Absolutely. Yeah, and and we are, if you remember, I started the meeting by saying that parents are the first teachers, right? If you get your children used to wearing masks, even at home, so that when they come to school, it will be easier for them to accommodate. Yes, I totally agree with you. And we will keep re recommending that in every meeting we have. So it is 6.01, and we want to be um, conscious of everybody's time. Mr. Hernandez, you've had your hand up for a while, please. Thank you, patiently. Thank you so much. Um, I have a, a question, and also I would like to make a statement, if that's possible. My first question is, um, is there any chance as far as the – I mean, I asked this question to my kids' school already, but maybe you guys have better information. Is there any chance as far as the remote learning is concerned that for the parents that are going to have their children – in a permanent basis with the remote learning. And for instance, like today's Monday and school session is already there. Can we see the live session at the same time? Um, you mean live streaming, right? Yes, exactly. Right now, right. I know what you're talking about, live streaming. That is being negotiated and talked about. As, as far as I know, uh, any, any teacher that's going to be in remote has to do some live teaching on remote. Live streaming, as far as I know right now, is not going to happen, but they're working that out with the um, unions at, as we speak right now. So I am going to tell you that if your child is in 100% remote, teachers will be mandated to be in synchronous learning, that means real-time learning, at, um, daily for an X number of time, uh, depending on the grade level of the student. And I wanted to say one thing. I mean, I... I real I did not realize that we're in a, a Zoom meeting with the entire District Nine here. Yes. I thought it was just one school. I want to say something as a parent here, I'm, and I'm hoping that every parent can hear me and understand what I'm about to say. You know, That's forget so about funny. with all the respect to the teachers and the the district councils. Forget about that right now. As parents, I see a lot of questions on this chat line. Oh, my son, my daughter's mask. This, this, this. We as parents need to understand this is a virus that is going on and it's not ending no time soon in our view. We have to make sure that where our kids are safe. We have to make sure our kids are practicing the social distancing, practicing safe hygiene. As parents, if you have the opportunity, forget about what's going on in everybody else's life. Take the time out. Go get the appointment done. Go to your doctor. Go, go to your nearest hospital. There's tests all over the Bronx. Google it. Google it. I'm sure you know somebody has taken a test. Go take the test as much as you can. Make sure you're safe. Make sure your kids are safe. Because at the end of the day, we're the ones that have to make sure that we are protecting our children too, just as much as the school is concerned also. You know, I see a lot of questions on this channel. Absolutely. It starts at home. It starts at home. Yeah, it starts at home, and we are asking parents to please work with us. The more that you inform your child at home and work with us, the better and the safer we are all going to be, right? So thank you for that comment. It is, I could not put it in a better no. way. Um, we are going well, to I be think doing, I work. Go ahead. We are going to be doing everything in our power 
I think doorknobs, so doing all of that, the, the intense cleaning, the sanitizers, the masks, all of that. We're going to be doing, our chancellor is doing everything humanly possible, but we do need you to work in partnership with us. And I am speaking out to 281 people on this call. We need your partnership. As you can see, I will be here to try to answer as many questions, and this will not be my last town hall. I will continue to do these and provide information as best I can um, in a continuing fashion. So next our question. next question, Mrs. Rosario, is there a protocol for students or families who refuse to wear masks while in the school building? The only, the only people that will be exempt from wearing a mask is any child or any adult that has a health reason for not wearing a mask, right? And there'll be documentation that must be collected on the part of the staff member and on the part of the student. Um, because as of right now, it's like wearing a seatbelt, right? We need to keep everyone safe. And unless there is a medical reason to my understanding, we will be required to wear a mask to be in the building. Uh, Next. So why, uh, So here's another question. Why should students get tested? Most of the time they are asymptomatic and are spreaders of this virus. We are not mandating testing for students at this time. If a child shows um, symptoms, we are asking the parent to take their child to the medical uh, provider. And it is between the medical provider and that parent to determine what happens next. We're here um, for the all I have a question from a parent. Um, I do not feel comfortable sending my child to school. Will I have somebody to assist me in helping my child with his assignments in my language? So this is from a non-English speaking parent. Thank you for that question. Um, yes, once the child is in remote learning, we should be communicating with that school that that parent needs support and then it is up to the school. It is the school's responsibility to make sure that that parent gets support for themselves and for the student. What will breakfast and lunch look like? So um, students will be coming into a grab and go and they will be asked to sanitize their hands before they sit in the classroom. So most of the time for most schools, and this may be different, at any specific schools for most of the time, the lunch will be within the classroom, especially for the younger students. And um, that way we can practice hand washing, we can practice the social distancing, and we can make sure that everyone stays safe because they have to remove their masks to be able to eat. We have another question. My child is going to school garden. I prefer for him to work remotely. My question is, are schools giving parents who are working the flexibility to submit the work at a flexible time? So with remote learning, as we did in the springtime, you can work with your school to be able to give you time frames to um, turn in assignments. So that will be on a school to school basis, but schools have been instructed that they are to work with parents and be flexible, uh, work with parents and their children and be flexible in collecting assignments. Um, so another question is for the upcoming pre-Ks and for the first grader, what happens to them being that they are younger and need more guidance? Are they included in the blended learning? Yes. They so they, uh, small children can also be included in the blended learning. And actually, to be honest, it's sometimes easier to work with them because um, they follow routines quicker. They understand songs and things of that nature around washing their hands and putting on their masks and how to play and how not to share certain materials and so yes um they are included in blended or remote depending on what the parents choose uh, i want to give an opportunity to anybody that is on the translation lines or right on the translation lines exactly and also here you can unmute yourself raise your hand and then we'll go back to the chat if we have some time it is 608 i want to be cognizant of everybody's time our meeting ends at 6 30. Okay, let's go. Let's go quickly. So, uh, I can uh, please, can I ask another question, please? Uh, Very quickly, and I'm going to ask that if a parent asks a question, I will only take a second question um, um, on one time because I want to make sure that we hear all voices. So, I will accept only this question, but please make sure that you're asking the question that you truly want to ask because I want to make sure that all voices come in. 
So yes, may I uh, ask your question? Okay, because I want to ask somebody cut me off. Um, the question is, uh, my son, the, my son supposed to be in PS fifty three, and I called and leave a message. Nobody called me back to tell me what to do before to know if it's uh, um the remote learning or I'm going to do the school. I've been trying to reach people from that school. Nobody coming me back. So easily, all you do is reach out. Um, Barbara and Yadira, please put your number again on the chat. This parent is to contact you, and you will make it. Um, you will connect that parent to the school. Easily done. So please put your information in the um, um, in the chat. Um, and Barbara and Yadira will reach out immediately and connect you to the school. No problems. Okay, another question is my sis, my uh, daughter is going to sixth grade. I didn't receive any letter too from the school. I didn't receive nothing. I don't know where she belongs. She keep on asking me questions that I don't know. And uh, the person that helped me to do the the season school. Yeah, so do me the oh, same somebody thing. Somebody call me, please. You're going to read out. You're going to reach out to Barbara and Yadira. You're going to let them know what sixth grade, um, what school they're going to in middle school. And they will make it their business to connect you to the school and get that information for you. Okay. Thank you. So can I leave my number? Somebody will call me or? Yes, you can put your number in the chat or you can. I don't know how to do that, miss. Or you can call. Or you can call Barbara. Can, I, can somebody give me a number to call? Uh, Yadira, would you give your number, please? Or, or Barbara, give your number now. It would have to be Jody's number, and I'm, I'm not sure. I'm going to put it in the chat, sir. Can you open up where it says chat? Are you on the phone or on your, on your computer? I don't know how to do anything, my love. I my go by okay. phone. Are you on your phone or on your computer? I'm on my phone. Okay. Uh, Yadira's not on? She's, she's manning a, a translation line. But let her come on and give the number. Okay. I believe it's three. Let me see. If I can it's three, four, seven, and I don't have it with me right now. Right, me neither. Um, but we'll definitely get it. And and you, if you could tell me your child's name, I will get your information and reach out to you. Give me your okay, child. My child's name is Precious Sadinku. You see Sadinku. Sadinku. Precious Adinku, You see Sadinku and Divine Adinku. Okay, sir. I will reach out to you as soon as we hang up from this meeting or tomorrow morning. Better okay, yet. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, next question. Okay, next question. Anybody else would like to ask a question? Yes, yeah, somebody's raising. I see somebody shaking their hand. I don't know who it is. Yes, Let's go ask ahead. A question. Unmute. Go ahead. Hi, um, it's Santiago from PS199. I have one question. Um, what if a child is getting an anxiety attack? Do we um isolate them? No, if, if there's not so the schools right now are being, the schools right now, the principal were just trained in trauma-informed education. Staff will be also trained in trauma-informed education. Plus we have social workers and guidance counselors that will be supporting children who have any anxiety attacks or are nervous about being in school. There will be things in place at every school to support the social, emotional, um, components of children's learning. In fact, our chancellor has made it very clear that the first few weeks of school is really focused in on the social emotional well-being of all students from 3K all the way to the 12th grade. And we are training, we have just trained principals and we are going to train staff in recognizing stress, in recognizing trauma and addressing trauma at the school level. Um, so um, any child that is showing any of those symptoms will be addressed and the family will be contacted immediately. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? It is 6.13. Yep. So I also wanted to let you know, I will be um, doing a, 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 a kind of the same thing, a kind of town hall for students next Monday for the elementary and for the middle school so that your children will be able to ask questions as well because we want to make sure that your children have the ability to ask questions of me similar in a similar format. We will be doing that on Monday next week, August 10th. 
Um, we will be doing it for the elementary and then for middle, we'll be making sure that we send out that information. And then we will be having another meeting through our equity meeting on August 25th. And again, we will make sure that that information goes out. We'll hopefully have more information by the 25th. And I will be giving updates on August 25th at, um, I think it's from four to, um, I think it was said, we said four, I think it's from four to six. We will be sending that as well. But this information does not stop. As information keeps going, we will continue to give you information. Um, if you have questions, you can reach out to Yadira or to Barbara by email or by phone. They give me the questions directly and they will call you. They will reach out to you and make sure that your questions are answered. If you're having trouble connecting with your school, again, contact with Barbara and Yadira. They will make sure to connect you with your school. Your school should be having town halls. Your school should be having information sent, um, sessions for you to answer questions as well. But if that is a problem, do not hesitate to reach out to the district. We will make sure that we connect you to your schools. Um, any other questions, concerns, or any other information? I really wanted it to be a question and answer um, portion uh, to this. Somebody asked, is District 9 considering having outdoor classes? Um, outdoor spaces have not been ruled out. Um, schools have to look at their particular situation and determine that. I know outdoor spaces, especially for physical education, are being looked at. Um, and for other classes as well, determining on, of course, weather. Um, but um, yes, um, outdoor, specials, um, outdoor spaces are also being looked out for space. We have a question from Sandra Mitchell. She says, what mental health services will be available in schools? Who's gonna be handling trauma cases? Some children have lost loved ones. So um, uh, many schools have partners like with Morningside or with other um, uh, community-based organizations that are supporting schools with trauma. So that's one way. Also, we have guidance counselors and um, social workers that are also being trained. Teachers will be trained as well. And right now we just finished, or we just did a training for principals. Our system principals will also be trained as well as our borough central office people. So there is a network that will be supporting our students with mental health situations as well as families. There's a question that says, if your child has asthma, will a face shield be okay in school? That will be determined by the doctor. So if there is such a situation with a child who cannot wear a mask, we will do that on a one-to-one -one basis and determine what would be the best case scenario for that student um, at that time. Um, Can you please ask my question? What about medical attention? My school, my school has um, one nurse. Will there be more medical? I think I answered that before. Yes. Um, <laughs> as of right now, uh, the, the Department of Education is working to make sure that there's a, um, a nurse at every school. Will there be more than one nurse? That will be determined by the availability of nurses and of course budget. And as you know, we are in a budget crisis in New York City as we stand right now. So that is the best answer I have at this moment. Wait a minute, I am the deputy chancellor. If I have any questions for me right now, select to and click on, okay, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Um, it says, how can staff get more information about filling out a form for accommodations? Where do we get the form and what qualifies as accommodations? So um, reach out to your school principal or your HR person at the school level. Um, those will be continuing going on for accommodations. It has to do with all different kinds of health, health issues and that will be determined on a one-to-one. -one. You can apply for an accommodation whether or not it will be approved will depend on the Department of Education approving it through the medical unit. Will the district support the schools with getting the best technology to support remote learning? Um, we are working with school budgets right now um, to get technology and connectivity. And again, anyone that needs technology or has issues with technology or has trouble with connectivity, reach out to the school themselves. The parent coordinators have been trained in that area to support. Um, but if you cannot get in touch with anyone, again, just reach out to my office and we will support and connect you. 
Will schools be closed for a period of time if a student tests positive? Will the student's so, parents be notified of a student who tests positive? So if, it, if someone is testing positive, that cohort of students will be notified and that, that school will be on quarantine, right? That, the, that group of students and that or the adults in that area will be quarantined. If there's more than, if there's two cases within the same classroom, that's the same way it will be handled. If there's cases, let's say two cases that are not in the same cohort, like of kids, right? Not in the same classroom, instead of using cohort, let me use classroom, not in the same classroom, then um, the school may be closed down um, for a short period of time. There will be an investigation and a determination by the Department of Health. And then they will determine by six o'clock whether the school will reopen, remain closed, et cetera, and parents will be informed. Um, I have another question here. It says, what will be done? Well, what are you going to do if a child keeps taking out their mask? <laughs> Again, we will work with children the same way that we work with children who don't stay in their seats, the same way that we work with children who, um, who, who need support. We will continue to support that child to the best of our ability and, and help the child understand why we're doing this. So that's why there will be specific lessons that will be done, especially in the beginning of the year around this. And again, lessons that will include videos, not to scare children, but to help children understand why this is happening. And that's why we're asking parents to again, support us in this so that they can understand this as well. We have one more question. How would it work for school buildings with more than one school? For example, if two schools come out at the same time, how would it work? How That's would we excellent question. So, and I see that I see Principal Kaziah Roberts is on and a couple. So if you want to chime in, please do. We have asked that all schools that are on a campus to coordinate to make sure that they are staggering um, either their entrance, so either which way they come in or the times they come in and out to make sure that we can maintain social distancing during arrival and dismissal. So the schools, and I don't know if any principal on the line wants to chime in, but they are welcome. We have asked that they, co um, they collaborate with each other um, to make sure that we can maintain the social distancing on a campus with arrivals, dismissals, and even when we're walking through hallways, um, for the most part, students will be in the classrooms, teachers will be moving, single file, there'll be signage on the floor to let them know which way. All of these things will be done to maintain social distancing and safety for our students, as well as hand sanitizers at different locations, um, mask wearing, all of that will be maintained throughout a campus. So it is 622. I'm just doing a time check. And so the next question is, will the DOE release a school calendar? I will, I assume that they will be doing that um, closer to when um, the, um, the school year begins. I'm assuming that yes. And I think the schools will also be re um, giving out calendars as well. So I'm going to say, and I'm taking a chance here, that yes, um, the closer we get and the more that we understand what, um, what models we're using and what the time frames will be yes they will be releasing a calendar and you should keep tabs on the news and keep tabs with your schools um in order to get that information but as soon as i get information i will try to make sure that it's disseminated to you as well will the doe employee have more social workers per school to help children and parents coping with the pandemic and its effect so again, um, um, we are in middle of budget situations. So I cannot say whether more social workers will be brought on because as you know, the city is in an uh, economic crisis. Um, there are social workers and guidance counselors per school. What that looks like will be done by school. Um, if there is a situation at any given school, please let us know and we will investigate. But I cannot answer whether more social workers or more guidance counselors will be brought onto schools. Because as you know, we are also not only in a COVID crisis, but we're also in an economic crisis as well. So it is 624. We're going to go through a couple of more questions. Are we making, Barbara, are we making sure that the translation lines have opportunity to ask questions? 
Yes, I see them working. I, I'm looking at them. They are they are translating as we are speaking. Yeah, and if there's any questions that they wish to ask, please give them opportunity. I want to make sure that they're in the translation rooms. They have opportunity yes. to ask questions. Perfect. So how safe is eating in the classroom when New York City doesn't allow indoor dining as of yet? Um, again, um, that will be six feet apart. They will be following um, the CDC guidelines around that. Um, and um, that's the best answer I can give right now. And somebody said, is school going to happen five days a week? Um, no, school is not five days of school oh, days a week. As in blended learning, children will be in school two to three days. And then they will be doing remote learning two to three days unless they opt for remote learning 100% of the time. Then there is, what will happen to gym? Physical education will still be continuing in different forms. For example, outdoor spaces may be used for physical education, as well as physical education for remote learning, where the, the teacher will be um, um, in synchronous learning, showing students certain exercises that can be doing. So physical education and the arts will continue through remote and blended learning. So I know you answered this question uh, before, but it, it seems to keep coming up. So I'm just going to ask it again. What about medical attention? My school has one nurse. Will there be more medical personnel on site every day? So I'm going to say this again. The Department of Education is working to ensure that there is a nurse at every site. I cannot answer whether there will be more nurses because as we know, that depends on the availability of nurses. And that also depends on economic situation that we're in. And again, we are also in an economic crisis right now, so I cannot answer whether that will happen or not. I can say that the Department of Ed is working to make sure that there is at least one health professional at every school. It is 626. I want to remind everyone that most of our parent coordinators have joined us this evening. They have put their information in the chat. If you have any particular question regarding your respective school, please reach out to them. Um, so I another question, Barbara, wait, um, are children going to be required to wear you? Are children going to be required to wear uniforms? That's a question that you ask your PC and the schools. Um, and the schools will be de making that determination. I cannot answer that as a whole for the district. Um, will full-time remote learning students get the same amount and same lessons as the in-person students? Yes, so the teachers will be, yes. So there will be, the teachers will be having time in their schedule. The teachers, meaning the teachers that are doing blended learning and the teachers that are doing remote learning will be collaborating and have time in their schedule to collaborate to make sure that what they're doing is this is very, very, very similar for the remote as well as for the blended learning. Um, so it is 627. I just wanna answer one thing. Uh, children in remote learning will still be able to pick up lunch at their school or at a close um, um, hub within their area. So they, students that are opting for remote learning will still be allowed to get um, food from the school location or from another hub in the area. Because that's really important. I want parents to know that if their child is in remote learning, they still will be able to get food. Here's a question that says, will staff be trained prior to opening? Um, we are working on that as we speak. I do not have the calendar for that training, but as I just mentioned, our principals just had three days of training last week, and we will continue to train as we go throughout the school year. Training will be continuous. So what happens if a parent, and let me just remind, Time check, 628. What happens if a parent brings their child to school when it is not the child's day to come to school? Great question. That they will be, um, the parent will be, so I'm going to say this, thank you again for that question. That's an excellent question. Um, schools know that that may happen, but I'm going to be very honest with parents. I need your support. In order for this to work, we must follow the same, the, the, the schedule that has been provided to us so that we can make sure that we are maintaining safety. We are going to be asking that you give us the most up-to-date information, contact information. Those parents will be contacted 
and the, and the child will be, um, we will be asking the parent or the caregiver to pick up the child. We need to maintain safety distance. In order to do that, we need parents to partner with us and to make sure that they follow the regulations so that everyone can be safe. Because if not, it's going to create issues that are then going to cause us to do other things that we don't want to do. So it is 629. And we're going to ask again if we any of the questions didn't get answered, if you could just please email uh, Javira at Y-E-L-E-U-T-I at schools.nyc.gov. And it is in the chat or B or T's 35 at schools.nyc.gov. And her phone number, did we give the phone number for her? Yes, yes. Javira put her number in the chat. Can you say it out? Can you say it though, please? Absolutely, Superintendent Rosario. Her number is 347-946-8108. Again, it is 347-946-8108. Zero 08. It is 630. Would you like to close us out, Mrs. Rosario? Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to say that if there are still questions, we will be collecting the chat information. If you put yourself in the chat, we will um, be reaching out and trying to answer your questions. Um, and again, I'm going to ask for what our chancellor asked for everyone, flexibility and patience. Um, Things are changing daily. Things are changing hourly. We are trying to give you the most current information that we have at any given point. We understand that this can be very frustrating. It is frustrating for us as well um, because things change minute by minute, sometimes hour by hour. But again, I'm going to say you have Barbara and Yadira. You have the parent coordinators that can support you in answering this. If you put your information in the chat, We will try to reach out to you and answer any more questions that we have. And as I said again, this will not be our last town hall, our last meeting. We will continue to have meetings throughout the year to give you as much current information that is humanly possible. So we thank you for being on this. I cannot thank you enough for the amount of people um, that have been on the call. Again, if you have specific questions, reach out to Barbara and Yadira. Also reach out to your parent coordinators um, and we will continue to try to answer as many questions um, as possible. Put your information in the chat. And again, we will review the chat. Um, Barbara and Yadira will be reviewing the chat and reaching out to you if you've given contact information um, to give further follow through. Thank you for being here this evening. I am so proud of District 9 and again, I can ask you, please work with us. We understand this is very frustrating. We have never been in a situation like this. There is no roadmap because this has never happened in the history of school. Um, So we are trying to work through this with the guidance of our chancellor, our mayor and our governor. Um, And we will try to support you as best as we possibly can. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, And thank you for the translators who have been working overtime. Um, and and helping us make sure that the message goes out. And thank you to our community-based partners who I also see. I see PAC was also on our call. Um, Please thank you. Again, they are our partners. They work with us, and they will try to disseminate information as well. All right, everybody. Thank you. It is now 633. And remember, this will not be our last call. We will be on a call again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, And we will try to continue to give you as much information as humanly possible. And I see that Richard Carranza's person put in, um, Richard Carranza's information has been put into the chat as well. So please, you can reach out to them and you can reach out to us as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to District 19. Thank you to the BCO. Thank you to our community partners. Thank you to our translators. And thank you, most importantly, to our families. We love you. We want to take care of you as best we can. Please remain patient and flexible. We will continue to um, try to support you as best we can. Bye-bye.